Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show, we got uh, Nazareth's own Pete Agnew. What's going on, Pete? Oh, yeah. It's nice to see you again, Jerry. Nice. Yeah, great. Everything's going fine in this COVID-ridden country. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're coming out of it now. Everybody's had it, so. You bet. Uh, surviving the Law, Frontiers Music, uh, April the 15th, the new Nazareth album. Um, this is the 24th studio album. It's kind of shocking. Uh, that it's you 25th. 25th. Okay. 25th. Yeah. <laughs> Last one was tattooed on my brain. So right off the bat, what's the difference between musically that you did differently on this album compared to last album and comparing that to, let's say, the, the 70s peak? Oh, well, it's a, well, it's a different band now for a start. Um, but the, the, the tattoo of my brain was the first album that we did with this lineup, you know, with a new singer. Uh, so, you know, that was that was our first time sort of taking everybody's songs, taking different guys' songs that we hadn't been using before, you know. Um, this time we've all got a bit, bit more used to each other. Uh, and it was a different sort of way, a different way of writing this time because we were, uh, well, we wrote it. And basically, I figured I've told everybody, we wrote it in jail and we recorded it on parole because it was, you know, we were stuck in, we were stuck in because of the, the, the pandemic, the plague, so everybody was uh, writing an awful lot more songs than they normally would because they weren't doing anything else. Um, and then, of course, we didn't get to record it up until because, again, all these quarantine restrictions and guys coming out in the country, you know, producers from Switzerland, a singer was out in Vienna and Austria. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we were sending sort of files out. We were in the studio, three of us, sending the files out to the singer, and he was doing the stuff, you know, out in, out in Austria. Uh, but it all, worked out, it all worked out very well. But like I say, we recorded it differently from the last one, main, mainly because the, just because of the circumstances, you know. Um, I think the, in terms of uh, the material and uh, the, the, the content of the album, uh, I, think there's a, I think this one's a, a little bit darker. I, I, was a bit, I think it's a bit heavier than, um, than Tattooed on My Brain. Mm -hmm. uh, Tattooed on My Brain was a great selection of all the songs that we'd all been writing at the time. But this time, I think uh, there's a there's a little bit more cohesion between the the, the different the different songs written out by the different people. Uh, I think because they were all in the same jail. But there you go. But, um, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I think this uh, you know the circumstances again had, were, were different. So um, yeah, I think I think you can. Th th there's definitely a a, a, a kind of different mood on this album, you know. But it's uh, I think it follows tattoos on my brain well because we. We were always a. We never ever liked to put an album out the same as the one before. You know, it was a, even going back to you know the hair of the dog days. Oh, can we have another one of those, please? You know, the record company would say, well, no. So we did like uh, you know, close enough for rock and roll, which was nothing like hair of the dog. And the next one we did after that was nothing like that one. So uh, you know, you always try to be yeah, be a bit fresh for the, for for your fans. So I think in this case, uh, I think. You know, it was it was a wee bit. It was quite funny actually because when we did that in my brain, we were kind of worried, you know, how the how the audience were going to take to a new singer, you know, replacing Dan, uh, and and you so you're always, you know, we're already got over the fact that it would already been accepted uh, live because everybody was loving it live. But you know, you're making an album; it's a different thing. It's a wee bit different when you get to record it. But of course, uh, yeah. well, the, it, it was great. They loved, the people loved it, and they thought it was a great album, lovely. So the nervousness over that one went away, and we were pleased. And then, then of course, then you get the same as every band. Can we follow that one? You know, that's the next worry, you know, because you get an album that was a really good album. I mean, it was probably, it rates up there with the best of Nazareth albums of all time. And so, and, and um, that's not just coming from me, that's coming from the fans themselves, you know, with all the comments that we were getting, um, it was a wee bit thing. Yeah, how do we? How do we? Can we follow this thing? You know, and I think we have. But it's uh, again, but it's a different, it's a different album again. You know, it's a different, a different mood in this one. Yeah, I think Carl Sentence, who is the current singer, for those of the people out there who don't know, he's a current singer. He was on the last album, like you mentioned. He, he's on this album. He's got a great voice. There's a more of a hard rock and metal feel, if you will, maybe, perhaps, on some of the songs. But it's always varied. Like all Nazareth albums, they're very varied. So I did enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, what do you say to 
I mean, we're living in an age where, you know, the name of the band continues on and on and on. What do you say to the naysayers who say, are you guys still continuing? Dan's sort of retired. What do you say to the people who say, why are you continuing? I mean, what do you say to those people? <laughs> well, basically, this is what I do. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still, so you're still an original member. I mean, that's the good news. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is what I, I mean. I get up in the morning, and I'm, you know, and and I, and I love rock and roll. It's just that it's just what I do. I couldn't imagine. Obviously, I couldn't imagine retiring. And I mean, there's lots of other guys, the same as me. It was funny, you know. I get a, I get a lot of the, uh, uh, I, I, well, I, I get a lot of people saying things like, you know, you how could you call it Nazareth? You know, because they're only yeah. one member. How I could call it Nazareth? I'll just go through a wee list of them, right? Status quo. It's just people with one member. So there's a lot of guys going to have to change their names here, right? So uh, let's go with Status quo, The Eagles, King Crimson, White Snake, Leonard Skinner, Uriah Heap, Slade, Sodom, Foreigner, Foghat, Boston, Yes, Starship, Blue Oyster Cult, Jeff Tull, Black Oak, The Outlaws, Sweet, The Animals, how can I go on Guns and Roses? You, you, and you, have, might, a, you, have, you have a whole list there mention, in front of you. I might mention ACDC, you know, <laughs> and if you want to get really tricky about it, Ian Pace is the only original member of the real Deep Purple that started off. So, I, yeah, I can think we can call this Nazareth. I agree. I agree. After I agree. these other 40 bands change their name, I'll change the name. <laughs> your, your favorite, let's say your favorite track or two off the new album. Um. I, you know, I'm just getting used to this thing, Jimmy. You know, we've no, you, you know what happens? You make a, you, you record an. This is, definitely happens with us. You record an album and you hear the thing so much when you're recording. You know, and and you're yeah. in the studio going over and over and over. I mean, by the time you finish, you're sick listening to the tracks. You know, because they're just oh come on. You know, can I listen to this thing again? And then after a wee while, and this is just getting to that sort of stage with me now. It's been out long enough for me to actually be able to listen to it, you know, as a as a record, you know. So uh, it was quite. I, I like the, the one. The one that, uh, that hits me right away. Is Strange days. I mean, I love the track. I think it's it, it, it's a really good song. It was Lee wrote that one, and it's and it's a it's got a great noise. It's a great energy. It's a very. I would have say if you were talking about a modern Nazareth, if we were that that would have been that would have been the one, you know. Uh, that, that I would have picked to, to represent her. But it was funny, I was listening the, the other day there, uh, somebody told me about They said, oh, you know, I was on iTunes and I saw all oh, the tracks up there. And you, you know, you get like a minute and a bit of each track. Yeah. It's a great way to go. It's a great way to go through the album, I found. You know, because I was going on it and I thought, yeah, this is good. I can skip through the whole album in 10 minutes. And then you can get a kind of feel for, oh, yeah, I like that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that one, you know. So... Other than Strange Days, I don't really have uh, a, 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 and I wouldn't say favourite. That's the one that sort of smacks me, uh, as that sort of stands out uh, as a as a whole production, you know. But there's other tracks on there that well, sound nothing like that. But things like Sweet Kiss um, and Siggies and Booze and things like that, they're just a wee, they're they're different. They're they're a wee bit more. They're really different, you know. Uh, so I like all them as well. It's. Uh, I'm I'm still at that stage with the album that I'm I'm still quite open minded. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. There's a there's a huge uh, for the people out there who don't remember. I guess I'm old enough to remember, but there's a huge connection with Canada and Nazareth. To the point oh. when I was growing, to the point when I was growing up, when I first heard Nazareth as a little kid, I thought that you guys were Canadian. That's how much they played you on the radio. I know, and I mean, and and, and to this day, I mean, we we we, we somebody was there was another. Um, Show that 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 you that, that that is done. I think it comes at uh, a BC, and uh, mm -hmm. a lady got in touch with me. Then it was the Can and it was all the Canadian greats, Canadian great bands. And then she was telling me, you know, so what? She she was going to do the show, and I'll get in touch with you. So where are you? I mean, we're on Vancouver time. Are you like an hour ahead or something? I said, well, uh, actually, I'm in Scotland. You know, and oh, are you over there? What are you doing over there? I say, well, we we'll love you. You know, this is where we're from. And she didn't know, you know, that Nazareth were not a Canadian that's right. band. That's and that, right. you know, so, and listen, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind. Canada took us to their hearts, you know, and um, yeah. and it was a great thing. You know, what happened with you, and this happened, the same happened, actually, it, it took us by surprise at the time because 
we didn't know about this CanCon, you know, this Canadian content. Right. We didn't know about that. Which, by the way, I think is a wonderful idea. I think every country should do that to give their homegrown talent a push. I do. I, I think that's a great thing. But uh, <coughs> for us, it was a great bonus for us because when we covered uh, this fight tonight, Jory, as you know, uh, was from Saskatoon. Now, and when 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 we did um, this fight tonight, we'd, when we came over, I mean, we'd already had we already did pretty well in Canada. You know, our, our albums before that, but uh, this one. We were, we were on tour, and we, this thing was on about twice an hour, and something like three times an hour. I said, by God, they like us here. Eh? And then somebody told us, then they told us about this, you know, this Canadian content. I said, oh, right, So, right. so Pete, just, just so I could tell everybody, because not only Canadians watch the show, but people in North America. Oh, right. So what we have in Canada, and we still have in place, I believe, I'm not sure, but we, what we used to have is sort of like a 20, 30%, everything on the radio had to have Canadian content. Or the meaning the composer publisher had to be Canadian. So in this case, this flight tonight, which was a Joni Mitchell song from Saskatchewan, like you said, because Nazareth is from the UK or Scotland, because it was written by Joni Mitchell, it qualified as Canadian content. <laughs> so That's right. we used to, Crocus, for example, American Women used to play on the radio all the time. Nazareth, because of Joni Mitchell, used to play on the time. because. So that's just so, to, to give everybody some background of why Nazareth right. broke so much in Canada. And it's a great song on top of it, right? Oh, yeah. It was a great version of the song. I mean, I, it, it was so funny. After, after we found that out, we were running about looking for a Neil Young song to do, you know. But, um, we, but we didn't do that. Um, no, what happened with that is uh, I remember when we, the day we released it in, in Britain, uh, it was we were over in, uh, in, in Hollywood, California, or A&M's studio. Uh, we were at the, the record company's head, headquarters there. And they had a studio there. And they said, oh, Joni's in recording right now. I think she was mixing Miles of Isles or something like that at the time. And we said, they said, go and say hello. So we went, all right, so we'll go and say hello. So we went in. And Johnny said, would you like a cup of tea? Oh, that would be great. And we said, listen, we've, we've released um, this flight tonight, today. And she said, with a rock band? And we said, yeah, yeah, it's great. So we played it to her. And she thought it was wonderful. She couldn't believe it, you know, the, the racket that was going on. You know, this, how different it was. But it was, it was funny because like a couple of years later, um, she came to tour in Britain and she opened up the Queen Elizabeth Halls in, in England and London. And she'd come on stage. She said, I'd like to start with a Nazareth song. <laughs> so we thought that was quite nice. <laughs> well, well, as a kid growing up in Montreal, I thought, first of all, Nazareth was Canadian because you're on these compilations of Canadian albums, like a K-Tel kind of thing, yeah. because of Joni Mitchell with this flight tonight. And second of all, um, I forgot my, my train of thought there. <laughs> but anyways, well, I thought you were well, Canadian we're, growing up. Uh, and, we were recording. We were recording all, the and, in the studio, and yes. Yeah. We did three albums up there and we did another album. We've done quite a lot in Canada, actually. We, we recorded up in... Uh, we record, recorded an album up in Vancouver as well. We did a live album in the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. So we've, we've got quite a... Quite a history with Canada, actually, you know, and it's it's nice. It's been Canada's been good to us, very very good to us, and we and and that's why we, well, we still try to come and do a Canada tour every every year. I mean, you can't do the whole place, obviously, it's huge, but you know, but but we do. We always come and get about fourteen or fifteen shows if we can, you know. In fact, we're coming over in August, hopefully. You know what if I we saw. Don't you know, when I saw you live, I saw you, I saw Nazareth live when the, you guys opened up for Black Sabbath on the Born Again tour in Montreal. Oh. Why were you late? Like this, to this day, it plagues me. So I went to see Nazareth open up for Black Sabbath on Born Again in Montreal, at the Montreal Forum. And the show was delayed something like an hour and a half and nobody knew <laughs> why. Do you remember? Oh, because, well, that was that, that stupid. Do you remember that stupid stage set that they had? Why is that was? I mean, that was their, you know, if anybody's seen Spinal Tack, that tap, that was what it was taking the piss out. I mean, that is incredible. They, they built that Stonehenge thing and it took them, it took them about a day, two days to put that up. Before we couldn't get on stage, they still had joiners up there 
banging up Stonehenge and doing this, that, and that. We couldn't get, we couldn't, our guys couldn't get in there to organise our equipment because of the amount of nonsense that was going on with Black Sabbath's wood crew. In fact, it was so funny because I think half of the crew got fired that night and then they never used the set again in the whole tour. It was like, that was the first night of the tour. It was hilarious. And that's what happened. I mean, it was just complete mayhem backstage, on stage. So, in fact, at one point, at one point, it was they were discussing that we weren't going to go on because it was going to take that long to get them on. But then there would have been complaints because, I mean, we did sell a few tickets ourselves as well, you know. But that's why you were waiting. You were waiting for them to build that stupid stage. <laughs> how was that, how that tour in general? Like, I mean, I know Black Sabbath, they, I think in the States it was quite right, but Nazareth did the Canadian dates, I believe. Yeah. We, we did we did four we did the four shows with them. I think we were what happened is we were going out to do an, a, a states tour, but that's what it was. We were going to do a states tour. And uh, and they and so we just did the four shows up in Canada at the beginning, you know, we came out and we did them first and then we met to America to do the rest of we were there for another six weeks. But the four shows we did, well I mean, it was a bit of a, that first one was a bit of a, 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 a carry on, to say the very least. But um, but the gigs were okay. The, the gigs were okay. I couldn't, I must say, is I'd, I'd never, uh, I mean, I've I've, listened, I've, I've I've been out with some, we're not that quiet ourselves. And I've been out with some loud bands, but I'd never, ever heard anything like that Black Sabbath thing. I couldn't believe it. We were, when they started up, we'd never we'd never seen Black Sabbath, you see, because we'd never went along to see them anywhere. And we were in the dressing. You know what that, that was like in Montreal, that, that the venue? Well, we were in a dressing room, God knows how far away from the stage, underground, you know, we, 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 we. And just after we were all standing talking, you could feel this rumble started. You know, this like this sort of, I thought it was an earthquake or something. It was a brrr, and they said, I think that's Black Sabbath started, you know. So we went up and I thought, my God, I'd never heard anything so loud in my life then. So I didn't, you know, I, I, I don't know what they were playing. They were that loud. <laughs> Did you get along with the, the, look, there's a connection with Deep Purple and of course Nazareth oh, with Gillen, right? Oh, I very well, very well. Because Ian, you know, we always we always got well with Ian. In fact, when uh, before that, or was it after that when when Ian got his own, you know, when he, he when Deep Purple, when he left Deep Purple, and then, and he got uh, the Gillen Gillen band together. Well, we took him out on tour with us as our yeah. opening band, and and it was and we got on great, and we did a long tour, and Ian was there. Well, he's a really good band actually, an excellent band. And I can't remember if that was after the Sabbath. I think it was before the Sabbath thing. I can't really remember. But the actual the with the when we did the Sabbath thing, oh well, well, basically I can remember the four gigs we played and we were in the bar with Ian every night. So, you know, that's it sounds like we had a good fun. I remember when that when that tour was announced, there were probably just as many Nazareth fans going there than Black Sabbath fans. It was it was a that was a good that was a good balance, but the thing is with the you know, when you got a couple of bands like that going on, you, usually your the, the fan the, the the people that would come to see those bands would like both those bands anyway. No, you know, normally it was it's like when we play with Deep Purple, you knew, you know, that, that if you like Deep Purple, there's a fair chance you're going to like Nazareth. You know, and if you're, you know, it's, it's not like you're playing with, uh, you know, a folk band or something like that. You know, so that any that was that was a good mixture, I thought. Um, and I think I don't think Black Sabbath were. At, at, that, that, that was kind of after their peak anyway, you know, they were, they were, right. you know, so it was, you know, it wasn't like, you know, one of these, you know, it's not like going along and opening for the stones where everybody's going, like you go up and play, what's the point? No, no, they're waiting, they're waiting for, they're waiting for these legends to come in. You're just getting in the way, you know, we can, as Dan used to say, they're sitting there going like, could you hurry up, please get off before I come off this high. <laughs> what about uh the legacy of nazareth okay we could talk about oh my god axel rose you know and you know he they covered guns and roses covered hair of a dog yeah. on their spaghetti incident and then what is it you guys are asked to by axel to perform at his wedding is that is there any truth to that well he's he, he, he talked to dan you know it was it was dan no no i don't 
it wasn't Nazareth as such. He would, he would, he would like Dante of some long went along to sing Love Hurts because well, he was getting married to a Neverly Brothers, you know, daughter. But um, so yeah, it was, um, it was, it was mentioned like for that, that he would like Dante do it. But uh, we, we were touring. It just, it just we were touring. It just it wasn't possible, you know. Or, or he would have went. He would have been. Dan would have went along, and sung. Oh, well, I think I think the, I think possibly the song could have lasted a wee bit longer than the marriage. I don't know. That's one of these things. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's obvious. Axl Rose was a. <clears throat> Dan was a huge influence on Axl. I mean, you could, oh, yeah. you could tell, right? Have you had contact with Axl or Guns and Roses over the years? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in the early days, obviously, they used to come to see us when they, before they were huge. They used to come to all our gigs in California and things, and uh, so we, we used to see a lot of them as, as younger guys. But the last thing we saw, actually, we were actually recording in Prague uh, a few years ago. We were doing an album, a Big Dogs album, and uh, they came to town to Prague, and he got in touch with with Dad because they found out that we were recording there, you know. So uh, I actually got in touch and said, oh, you've all got to come down, come down, blah, blah. So sent the manager up to get us and we went, we were in a studio just outside the price. So we came down and we saw that Guns N' Roses. It was a great band, by the way. I mean, it's, it was only him from there, but they were really, really good. It was, uh, when they eventually went on, I mean, it was, uh, you were talking about us being an hour late and uh, Montreal, I mean, actually can be a day late, you know. <laughs> so they went on about, I don't know, an hour or two late or something. But we weren't fussy because we were in the bath. So um, that was uh, that was a good that was a good night. And that's the last time we saw him. Uh, but uh, you know we don't. I mean, we, you know we don't all write to each other or stuff like that. You know, just that. Uh, you know, we 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 run into him down again. I was also reading an interview with you like way back where where Russia and Ukraine were like your two big markets. For, for for Nazareth, you know, people, I guess, seem to love the band there. And then you look at the situation in Russia and Ukraine now, it's just, isn't it sort of uh, despairing in a sense, right? Well, um, I should have been in Russia tonight, right? Or two. Yeah, yeah, we should have been in, we should have been in Novokuznetsk last night, Barnell the night before. And I think... It was Novosibirsk tonight in Siberia. I'm not sure. Tomsk, maybe it's Tomsk. Anyway, we had, and we should have done Moscow and uh, Ufa and Yekaterinburg in February. We had to cancel that one because of the, the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. But this one, and then what we had here now, in March, going March and into April, uh, was the 11 Russian dates and three Ukraine dates. Now, in Ukraine, we should have finished this tour in about a week's time in uh, Kiev, and Kharkiv, and then uh, Zaporizhia. So that's Kiev, you all know. Kharkiv, they flattened. And Zaporizhia is where they've got the atomic power station that they went to. So that's where we should have been now. The yeah. Russia and Ukraine, well, I was going to say, are still a huge market for us. I don't know. As we speak, I don't think it is. I don't know if I'll be back to any of them. But um, yeah. that's funny, you know, people are still making noises. We, I just had a... I just had a, a, an email and came into the business email yesterday from this guy telling me how ashamed we should be of ourselves for not cancelling the Russian tour. And I was going like, excuse me, but we cancelled it. You know, he, he was saying, like, you know, there's um, there's bands, European bands, bands all over the world have cancelled and Nazareth haven't cancelled. In fact, we were the first to cancel. We were the biggest to do that country. We were the most important band to do, but we were the first to cancel. But what happens is, the promoters don't stop advertising it, you know? Yeah. So this is what happens. These these guys see your name still getting advertised. You know, they don't look at your website to see if you're advertising it, you know? So you get accused of all sorts of stuff. I was a wee bit annoyed about that because, I mean, you know, we, we, we've got lots and lots of good friends in Russia and in Ukraine, you know? I mean, very good friends in both countries. And, and I'm talking to them both as we speak. I mean, I was talking to my mate in Moscow yesterday and we're talking to people in Kiev who are actually shouldering guns right now. And one of them was phoning. She, she was in touch from a, a bunker that she's been, uh, well, long have been hiding and that's where they sleep. And they come out during the day. Uh, and these people are, you know, they're shouldering guns now. These people that were working with us as tour managers and interpreters and stuff. I think it's, I mean, it's very, very sad, but it's just, it's doubly sad for us because it's friends of ours that are doing it, you know. 
you know, it's very unfortunate and I wish, you know, uh, all the people in the Ukraine, you know, all the best. And I hope, you know, everything works out and uh, this ends. Um, on a lighter note, um, you know, you had the big ballads as Nazareth, but then the band Helix from Canada covers Dream On. Right? That's right. Which, which that was which, actually... That, <laughs> go ahead. Go that was ahead. funny, that one. Uh, that was good, that one, because, I mean, we played... You know, we know, we know Helix. We know, we know other can, the, the Canadian bands. You know, Streetheart Manny produced them, and oh, all of them did the headpins, and they're all, they're all friends of ours, you know. And I remember... Uh, <laughs> One night we, because you see, Dream On was a massive hit for us in Europe. I mean, it was, but we never released it in Canada or America. That, but it was released in Europe, and it was. I mean, if you go to Germany and you put on, you know, the daytime soaps, you know, the soap mm -hmm. on it, you hear Dream On at least half a dozen times in the afternoon. You know, on the, <laughs> in these things, you know, and it's another thing. But it was funny because we were we were playing a gig. It was a good few years ago, and. Uh, uh, but up until then, we'd never realised who, uh, we knew somebody had covered it there, but we couldn't remember who. And we were playing with Healy, or Healy's were playing with us at this gig, and they were on before us, and they came to the dressing room and said, is it okay if we play uh, uh, Dream On? And we went, ah, you know, knock yourself out, you know, what's, you know, what's what? and, uh, and then somebody says to you, well, these guys had like a number one hit. We said, well, good on you, get out there and play it, because we'd never played it. We'd never, ever played it in Canada. So what happened was uh, the last See what we used to play for the slow one, if you like. Other than Love Hurts, we used to play Sunshine in mm -hmm. Canada because mm -hmm. that was the big, you know, walk down the aisle song, you know. That uh, and so that was our kind of slow one for the set. Whereas we we would in, in in Europe when we're playing at that point of the set, we'd play Dream On, you know. So a couple of times we've been in Canada uh, and we've played Dream On you know, at a couple of concerts since then. And people will think we're covering, we're doing a cover version. <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, uh, no, I mean, uh, Felix, strange Felix enough, got... strange enough, when they released Dream On, I thought Helix actually wrote that song. <laughs> right, well, there you go. See, a lot of people thought we wrote, wrote Love Hurts. I wish I had. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Just the same way I used to think Love Hurts when it first came out as a kid. Yeah, it was, it was your song. So, oh, was it? well, I remember one time we did a thing on a, I think we did a thing on a website and tell everybody you should listen to Joni Mitchell, Joni Mitchell's version. You know, doing a lot, yeah. uh, doing uh, this way tonight, and all these people are in, and you know, the, oh, that's just horrible. God, what, what has she done with your song? I was saying, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's the other way around, you know. But, uh, no, I think uh, I, I thought I thought the Helix version was excellent. By the way, it's it very is, very it good. Is. It is. It's a great record. It's a really great record. I guess what distinguishes distinguished Nazareth to other bands who did covers. The difference between Nazareth, in my opinion, and you could comment on this, is you've managed to take a song from someone else and make it your own, but make it your own so much so that people believe it's actually your song. But, but, yeah, and, and that's the way, and that's how you've got to be able to. That's if you're going to do a cover, you've really, you've really got to treat. The, I mean, obviously, you're doing it because you love the song in the first place. So that yeah. means you love the record usually in the first place. But you have to for, kind of forget that and treat the record as if it's a demo. You know the original record, and then say, what would we do with this? If somebody had come in just playing this on a piano or just on a guitar, you know, and then you can do. Uh, and make it yours and try and make it yours. I'll, I'll give an example of how it, sometimes it, how it doesn't work. We've tried other things. Uh, we've done other covers. That, nah, I don't know if they were that great, but we've done other covers. We've tried them. And unless you can really change it that much, you wouldn't look at it. We, there's a band called, uh, well, over here, The Move, they were called, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Britain, they were huge, huge over here. And uh, they did a song called Tiger Woman, Wild Tiger Woman. And it was a, it was a great, Great record, and we used to play it when it came out, you know, way back in the, in the 60s. And we were up in the studio one day, actually, and we were, we were messing about with, you know, doing doing stuff and more. And I think it was when we did the Playing the Game album, and we said, Tiger Woman, that was a great one. Why don't we have that? Give a go at that. That would be great. So we went in, and we played it, and we played, we played it great. We did, I did a good job of it, we played it great, and we sung it, and everything. And then we played it back, and we thought, it's just the same as the move. <laughs> just, I mean, it just—it was just another version of the move. I mean, it was just the same. So, 
completely worth. It's worthless, you know, to us as a uh, as an exercise. We had failed in making that song into something else, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I think that as, as, as you used to say, you, you've got to get put uh, not to make it not sound like a cover, really. You know, to make it sound as if it was yours and. And, and we're, of course, with Johnny, I mean, it's obviously it's, a, it's easier to do that because she's sitting playing it on an acoustic guitar, and it's you know, That's obviously, right. as as soon as you add bass, drums, and electric guitars, it's going to sound different anyway. That's not just the, the sound of the thing; it's the approach to it. It's getting the arrangement and, and the way to do it. You know, the, the the way to do the song. And if you do that, I mean, um, I think that's the, the the secret. If you like, if there's any such thing, that's secret. That's right. Any uh, fond memories at the studio? You did, you know, you did a few albums there, but uh, it's, oh. it's, it's the north of Montreal, so everybody knows it's it's millions. It, it now. I know, I know, I know, I know. Millions, millions. We used to, we, but we we used to we did three albums up there. We did one in the spring, spring I think it was, and then we did one in the autumn, and then we did one in the winter, oh, and that was yeah. it. That was it. That when we went up there, there was a guy. Who had a tow truck company just down the road from us, and I think when we left, he retired and went and bought an island in the Bahamas or something, you know, with the amount of money that he'd got in Nazareth for towing our cars and snowdrifts and everything. <laughs> so we used to. It was great. It was a great studio. We and uh, and it was really handy for nipping down to Montreal if you had a and you had a night off. We used to zip down there, down to Thursdays um, uh, now and again and. Uh, have a have a Yahoo, but up in the, the, the studio was uh, it was so different, you know. From I mean, there was a lot of these studios that were that, and we used to do the living studios as we call them out in the countryside, and everything, but there was nothing quite like that place. That I mean, you'd have to you had to see it. To, you have to be there to just realize just how beautiful the, the surroundings and everything were, and it was a great place to record. Just just generally, it was a, well, we went there. It says it. It says it. Well, we did three albums there. <laughs> what does that tell you? You know. Well, I mean, we, I, I, I go by there as a pilgrimage because I'm not too far away, and I just, I just, right. take, I, I just go. And for people who don't know, you have to go down this little sort of country little road. It's like in the forest, and oh. that's how you get there. And uh, oh, it's we, a small got, town. we got we got stuck there. We were in Warren Heights, where we were at San Savoir, where we were in the we 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 a little house there. And uh, we used to go down into Moran Heights to eat and things at night, but the, the amount of times, and when it got to that winter, the amount of times that we get stuck up there sleeping on the couches and on the floor of the studio, but we're getting snowed in, because it used to come to, you know, you would you would be in working on a track, and it started to snow, and you never really notice it that for, you know, at first. And then the guys would go, oh, it's starting to snow, and we would think, oh, well, that's it. No, we, we come from Scotland, we get snow, but we don't get snow. No. We don't. We get. We get. Uh, Canadians would laugh at what we call snow, right? You know. That's right. But we used to, and now, what we used to say there, the guys go, right, guys, it started to snow, and then they go, it's getting big snow now, you know, and it's time to run away because if you don't get out of the place and get back to the house or wherever you're going, you're there for the night, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, well, keep in mind, so Montreal as a metropolis, right? It's three million yeah. people, Greater Montreal, but. When you go, it's north. More nights is north of Montreal, so there's always on the countryside the weather's more extreme, right? Oh, I, oh, I. so so oh, Montreal I mean, gets what? a lot of snow, but when you go up to the mountains, <coughs> it gets a lot more snow. Well, so yes, we had we had so many friends in Montreal back in the seventies. You know, like when when we used to get when we were touring, when we were touring in America, not even on a Canada tour or a Canadian tour. If we were touring in America, and we got a couple of days off, we used to fly up to Montreal from wherever we were down in the States and we'd fly up, have a couple of days off up there and then fly back down to... And I'm not just saying that. I mean this. We did used to do that. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and did you... Uh, were you friends with Miles Goodwin and April Wine? Oh, I... I Miles is a... Uh, Miles is a good friend. And uh, the last time... Actually, the last time I saw Miles, we just a couple of years ago, we were playing on... Um, we, we, you know, they, they do this... Uh, these boat, boat cruise things, you know. There's yes. one goes from Florida... And uh, we were on that one uh, just just before the the year before the lock up the lockdown thing there, and April Wine were on that, so it was great. Got to hang out with Miles and uh, you know sh chew the fat for a bit and uh, remember, remember, remember. You know? <laughs> I mean, they, they, the thing is, they used to 
the April Wine again, they did a long tour with us. We did a we did a coast to coast job up in Canada, and April Wine were with us. And uh, well, there was a few wild nights in that. I mean, we were we were a bit crazier in those days. And were Miles was dead. Brian Greenway too. <laughs> Were you friends Brian, with Brian? Brian's, Brian's, again, Brian. That, I saw Brian's. I say these are Miles and Brian are the guys that were always, always been fair. And of course, Jerry. I mean, Jerry, Jerry was. Uh, yeah, the drummer. Jerry, yeah. Jerry. I saw Jerry. He come off to Scotland there just to be where ago um, a couple of years ago. Uh, Jerry was. Uh, well, Jerry was one of our favourite drummers. He's a phenomenal oh, yeah, drummer. Yeah. He's moved. He's moved to Kingston now, I believe. I think he's staying. He moved to Kingston, Ontario, a few years ago. There, um, maybe. So yes, but he was—he was—he was, he was, he was a great, he was a great, great drummer, and a great character. They were a great band, real, yeah. great band. Too. Oh yeah. As Any I say, last... I had a lot, of, lot of drunken nights with those boys. <laughs> Any last sort of words on the new album, which is coming out uh, b- 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 April fifteenth uh, on oh, Frontiers? Well, I mean... Any last comments? And, and I say, I, I think I, if you, Nazareth fans, if people who have been sort of Nazareth fans are going to love it. I just, I, I can tell them that they're going to love it. It's going to be, and if and if you're not a Nazareth fan, well, you probably won't buy it anyway. But I mean, check it out because I think it's uh, it's got something to say. You know, it's definitely got something to say. It's it's, it's very relevant, and it's uh, and there's a lot of it. It's uh, it's, uh, it's 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 today. It's very today. All right. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. And it's it's just like all Nazareth albums. It's got a little bit of everything, you yeah. know, uh, so, and, and that's the cool thing about it. Uh, except a cover. There's no covers on it. Like I was expecting a cover, but. No, we, but we haven't, done, we haven't done covers for a long, long time. You know, it's been a, it's been a long, many years now since we, since we, oh, why? I mean, it's a long, long time since we did a cover. I mean, if we, we don't, we don't avoid them, but if we, if we, if there was some that came up, then uh, and we would definitely go for it. But you see, the thing is now, we've got four guys uh, that, that write songs, we've got four, four songwriters, and the songs are, I mean, the guys are all very good at what they do, you know. So, you know, by the time we get through the stuff that I've done, I mean, you know, I'll tell you what, Jimmy, with this one, there's a bit, there's a good 10 songs that aren't on it could easily have been on it you know yeah, I mean yeah. they're, they're, they're good enough to be on it but they're just you know space you know time you just didn't didn't, didn't have it and, and, and the, the, the shame about that kind of thing is if a thing doesn't go on the well mind you uh, Carl our singer and Jimmy our guitar player both put out a solo album just before uh, you know just, just before we were, well, they were doing it while we recorded that one, so a, a lot of the material got used in there as well, you know. So the, the, the written, but generally, if you don't, you know, if the songs that you write don't make it onto that album, people always say, "Oh, well, you can put it onto the next one." It never happens. It just very rarely happens, you know, because by the time you get to the next one, you've written new stuff, you know, that you like better, and and, there, and that's that's probably a good thing. So you know, you know what you're getting fresh. <laughs> yes, yes, and on that note. Thank you so much, Pete, for being on the nice show. Uh, it's been a pleasure. After all these years, I finally got to speak to uh, you from Nazareth. Pick up the new album. It's going to release once again, April 15th, uh, Surviving the Law. And hopefully there's okay. many more years to come and many more tours. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, pal.